Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Fist Chat, the vodcast that features discussions on the topics of film, science, and technology. My name is Ben Warner, and I'd like to welcome back uh, my good friend Steve Kern. How are you doing there, Steve? Hi everyone, how are you? Good to be back once again for another Fist Chat. Absolutely. So we're um, going to delve into a bit of technology uh, today uh, with um, the topic of uh, cloud computing and storage, um, which uh, is quite fascinating in this day and age. Um, uh, just Actually, just before we uh, kicked off the episode, we're having a little bit of a chat about um, maybe if we can start with... Uh, Maybe even how relevant it is, um, given how um, how cheap uh, you know personal storage is with um, you know two terabyte, three terabyte hard drives and flash media coming out and all that sort of thing. So um, it's quite uh, fascinating how how that's all gone. But I mean, if we take a step back um, in terms of uh, where it all started, I mean, probably um, would you agree? Like uh, things like um, you know like Hotmail, Gmail, like those web based email accounts is that's probably a good first example of where it, it kind of got mass, massively adopted by the public. Absolutely, and I think that uh, in those early days of the internet, we, you know, starting to get penetration at that stage and, and people starting to get on board, what was really interesting is that, um, you know, obviously we didn't have computers as quick as they were back then, or as, as they are now, I mean, and, uh, you know, storage was always a problem. You know, uh, 10 years ago, you would have had a 27 gig drive if you are really lucky. Um, so, you know, and also the computing power, you know, in offices and, and uh, corporations was huge that they were using to, to uh, store data with. And uh, it was, you know, heating up whole buildings and needing cooling systems of its own, using a lot of power. So um, I think once, uh, you know, your uh, hotmail systems and, and those early type of, uh, I guess, clouds uh, began to, to work, the next phase was that um, they, could, they could ship to cloud-based computing uh, for storage, but also at the time they were talking about for applications as, as a way of stopping software piracy. Yeah, it's interesting actually. Um, the, the thing that immediately leapt to my mind when you're thinking about cloud storage is not necessarily storing your own data, but um, storing things like software applications, um, you know, say your personal music, um, movie, TV libraries. If you've got an Amazon account, for example, why would you download it, store it on your own hard drive, and then um, you know have that clutter up all the space that you've got um, when you can uh, just have it linked to your account and you can download it whenever you want. I mean, it's irrelevant um, in terms of download limits and things like that these days because you get, you know, however many gigabytes or whatever. I mean, that's for Australia. If you're lucky to be uh, in America or something like that, you get unlimited plans. So it doesn't really matter how much you download. No, well, that's absolutely right. And also, uh, I mean, even though we've got great storage devices now, you know, with high definition, and I'm sure they're soon to give us 3D experiences over the web, they're large file sizes. And, and they're obviously things like that, you know, you probably don't mind too much being up in the cloud. And and just on that, if people want to imagine where television's going, you know, free-to-air television, that'll go straight into the cloud. And you'll access your programming basically through a cloud because you you don't want to have every uh, file that the television station has, and yet you still want to pick and choose what you watch. And I think you'll find that within that cloud, uh, just just on that, that uh, while there'll be a lot more on demand, you know, there'll still be a fair bit of passive viewing uh, uh, as well. well, there's always the option that they can, you know, do their regularly scheduled programming, but then also offer the option of just picking what you want to see. Exactly, especially with first releases, and I think that's what you actually see happen, and uh, that's why uh, television will, despite what people say, win the battle of the internet. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so, just in, uh, in terms of another thing, like uh, you've got, um, like Google, for example, they're creating uh, their Chrome OS um, operating system, which is designed to be a cloud based operating system. In effect, on a low-cost netbook, um, you would basically boot up in, in the Chrome OS and you'd basically be looking at something that looks like the Google browser now, um, but you're accessing all your applications that way. I mean, it's an interesting way of, um, of seeing things. And um, Maybe, you know, there's some merit in maybe that happening, whether, um, you know, more traditional operating systems like Windows and Mac OS X, whether they would adopt some, th some sort of strategy like that. Well, it's interesting you say that, Ben. You know, like uh, we sit here some weeks talking about evil Apple, 
and we talk about or we laugh about Microsoft and its bungled attempt to take over the internet with MSN. But, uh, you know, effectively that's what Google will do with its uh, netbooks, I guess. And um, will people really accept that? What I want to see is when, when push comes to shove, I mean, people have traditionally rejected somebody owning the internet. You know, now with clouds, that's going to start to fence off the internet. Now, will people go for that? You know, you're going to need to get a very good deal. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, now if we, I mean, if we talk about storage um, as well, I mean, th- that, I mean, that brings up another side of it. I mean, would you want your data to be stored at a third party, on a third party server, whether it's offered by Google? We saw Apple's um, rumoured to have purchased iCloud.com for a future, um, you know, cloud-based service. Um, you know, and, and obviously there's plenty of companies out there that offer third party um, backup solutions, for example, of all your data. Um, I mean, if we just talk about the security aspect of it first, there's a question of whether you want that data held by a third party. Now, obviously, there'd have to be some sort of rules or regulations or something to prevent that third party from doing anything uh, with that data. But, um, you know, what do you think about that? Well, uh, what do we think about it, Ben? I mean, you know, we're told that nuclear power is completely safe. We're told that, you know, the lights will never go out. We're told that, you know, bad things only happen somewhere else. But uh, until they happen to you, I guess, you know, <laughs> I guess you can ignore it. Uh, your medical records will be in the cloud. Your government, you know, your traditional bank details or all those things, if they start to go into the clouds, then what then? I mean, there'll be a whole new industry devoted to uh, ripping that information out. And uh, they can tell me it won't happen, but if you can put it in, you can take it out. Well, I mean, in that respect, you'd think um, sensitive data like that would be, it would make more sense to leave that on like a pri- on private networks that are secure. You would think so. And I mean, uh, you know, getting back to what you were saying a, a moment ago, sure, I mean, I don't mind if my whole DVD collection's in the cloud. I don't mind if all my e-books are in the cloud. I don't mind if really, I guess... You know, maybe majority of my uh, music and, and personal memories or recollections in photos are in the cloud. You know, but you, you, would you put all your photos in the cloud? What if they were to disappear? I mean, even just on a, a more simple sort of solution, really, the simple fact of the matter is you can walk into any um, computer store, buy a fifty-dollar hard drive, and store everything. I mean, not like okay. We're into video production, so we have produced video. So our needs are a little bit different in that we'd probably need a lot more storage to, you know, obviously back all of that up. But your average person really is not going to necessarily have as much as that. And um, when you can buy, you know, one, two terabyte hard drives that seem to be able to capture heaps of, of, of data, you know, for, you know, that you would have, especially if it's just documents or, you know, things like that. I mean, why would you bother paying a, you know, 50, 100 buck monthly subscription or however, even if it was 30 bucks, why would you pay that every month when, you know, you can buy, you know, you can pay that once and you've got it and you've got it forever. All you, all you would need to do is maybe have a second one in a second location if you really wanted to be careful so that, um, cause there's the chances of both going down at the same time is, you know, highly unlikely. Well, yeah, but, you know, on the flip side of that is, um, you know, with, with, I guess, just, of course, uh, changes in formats uh, as we move forward, digital formats, you know, if you've got a CD, if you've got stuff on CDs now, which I'm sure you have, you know, once they phase out optical drives, what are you going to do? So I guess the argument would be from your cloud supporters is that, you know, that information is always accessible and updatable through the cloud so there's no need to actually physically change over the the uh, mechanism because i can well see that hard drives will be gone before long and you know maybe even flash memory as well as they move to probably uh, photonic devices but even then like if you can imagine like if we go with one of those um devices that you suggested even if say if we even imagine flash memory say if that you know, the size of a um, memory card or a thumb drive and it's, um, I don't know, 10 terabytes in size, 
um, and you just plug it into your computer and away you go. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, it's interesting because you can't really, uh, maybe it's for people that, um, I guess, you, I guess you can already tell that I'm not, uh, not so into it, but, um, maybe that, <laughs> but, um, I can, I can pretty much see that, um, it, it must be for people with or organizations with certain needs, um, that need to have these things, um, need to have these things backed up. Look, I understand it from a commercial uh, point of view and, and uh, certainly from a corporate point of view, we certainly use uh, cloud uh, applications here. But what I want to know is, is there anyone out there who's going to tweet us you know, or would tweet us? Who, who's for cloud computing to store their data? I'm not sure about that. Well, I mean, there's also the other inevitable question, as which you might have um, sort of suggested before, is that maybe it's just inevitable anyway, that, um, that that's just how it's all going to happen. If it's the only option you've got, <laughs> you're going to take it. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it's it's just amazing that um, you've got all these options, I guess, but um, I think uh, you have to have a bit of a think about how it's all going to work, whether it's going to work for you or um, whether um, it's something that um, you even need to worry about. Yeah, well, but on that basis, I mean, uh, perhaps we, we should still cover some of the benefits, which may include the fact that uh, you pay a small licence fee to access software uh, rather than a large uh, fee that you pay for the expense of uh, actually getting uh, software physically delivered or, or bought. And um, perhaps through that, though, uh, you know, you have the benefits. Well, I think you can see things like uh, Apple's, um, you know, the Mac App Store or the uh, apps, you know, the I, um, iOS um, App Store that they've got uh, with iTunes, where you know you, you've got all your apps available. You just sign into your account if you, you know, update your Mac, you get a new Mac or whatever. You just sign in and you just cop, you know, just download them and away you go. Um, you can see you can see how that's um, infinitely, um, you know, more useful. And on top of that. There's this tendency, which this is a sort of a side topic, but um, and Apple's sort of kickstarting this in that in those app stores, they're actually reducing the price of a lot of premium software um, because and they're getting higher turnover for it. Like for example, Final Cut Pro, which uh, you know both of us use that uh, extensively for video editing, is part of a very expensive um, suite of applications. But there's um, apparently the next version of Final. Final Cut, um, Final Cut Pro 10, I think it's called, um, or Final Cut Pro X, which is coming soon, um, will actually um, uh, be offered at a discount price. I think something like 299 US bucks, um, and um, it's actually going to be decoupled from the from the actual suite. So, and and Apple's already started this by um, changing um, some of the software by um, you know the iLife package or the iWork package. Yeah. You can get all those applications individually now, and I think they're going to be doing that across the board. And that's only going to encourage third party developers to do the same thing. You know, reduce the price and just pump them out, kind of thing. Well, it costs costs a lot of money to put a disc in a box. Yeah. You know, it costs a lot of money to print all those Final Cut Pro manuals. You know, much easier to uh, to sell. You know, and not have anything physically hard. I mean, that's what we're seeing newspapers do now. Yeah, absolutely. With iPad apps, so yeah, there's a big cost saving for them, and potentially huge pro- uh, profits. Cool. Okay. Um, I think uh, we're rapidly running out of time again, so um, I think we'll have to wrap it up there. But uh, thanks, uh, thanks again, Steve, for the chat. It's uh, always interesting to talk about uh, technology. It's um, a fascinating field, and it's always uh, developing at an alarming rate. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's all up to the cloud. Yeah, you know, we'll talk about this more, I'm sure, in the future because there's some big applications soon to come out. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, if, um, don't forget um, our main website, www.fistchat.com. You can get all our social media links and download our episodes from there. Um, and uh, if you've got any questions, um, just Facebook or tweet us. So remember, we're on the lookout for any questions that you might have on uh, any topics related to film science or technology. Um, depending on how we go, we'll either make an episode out of um, a question or two or maybe we'll do a Q&A episode. really is um, dependent on... Um, what uh, gets sent through to us so um, we're um, we're going to be back uh, next week again uh, with another topic so uh, until then we'll catch you then 